uh, to worship at the well. Uh, it's our hope that you feel connected in community. The doors are opening. Vaccines are becoming available. We're getting a hint of what a little bit of some freedom feels like from what has been a challenging year. Through all of that, though, I hope that each of you has felt God's presence, that you have felt His, his hand with you um, in, in ways that shows you everything that is glorious in your life. It might not always be easy, but He is with us. Amen? Uh, our, fir- our song this morning, first song this morning is Everything Glorious. Um, I'm pretty sure this probably is a new song to this congregation. I don't think we've ever done it here before that I remember. Um, but I, I think uh, I think you'll you'll appreciate the message in the verse. challenges we face in our life is to recognize that even in the hardest of times, the most difficult of situations, if we are open to his leading, if we are willing to push aside the way we want things and receive the thing that he's giving us, we can find something greater even in difficulty. You know, I think so much about the people who've been in facilities, whether that be hospital or senior care facilities, and I think about the staff And I think about the bond that's had to build between the staff and the guests because there was no other option. There were no family visitors. And you think about some of the connections that we pray emerged in that. And I I just really hope that those relationships built. I think that's such a a sensitive moment, a sensitive spot um, because ultimately we can feel very alone, but we are not. Amen.
six. Savior, you are our Lord. I long for the day that the masks can be gone, that voices can fill this room, or at the very least that the weather warms up and we can be outside. I miss hearing your voices, but I know that you sing in your hearts. I know that he lives in you. Good morning. Uh, sermon series has been covenant. And um, today we're talking about that which is just unbreakable, this covenant that God has, has made with us. So we talked before, the uh, difference between a contract and a covenant is a covenant, it, it, it originates with God, it ends with God. God keeps the covenant even when we don't. Um, and God is incredibly and eternally faithful in that. The scripture passage is from Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. And it, uh, the writer is talking about this movement from, from death to life. And, um, and there is a key verse in here that I'll go back to if you want to pay particular attention to verse 8. Because uh, if there is a cornerstone of Protestant theology, Protestant thinking about God, um, it's this phrase. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, 
And we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By, for by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So the key first there is, is verse 8. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. It's hard to grasp or imagine the significance of that. For by grace you have been saved, not by works. All of our efforts to fix things, all of our efforts to prove ourselves, all of our efforts to earn love and forgiveness, this is what God has freed us from. There's a, a movie, The Mission, and um, I want to show you a clip from the movie, but in order to understand the clip, I, I have to set it up. It's actually two clips that I spliced together. The Mission is a Jesuit mission, a Spanish Jesuits, to um, a part of Argentina and to an island to the villagers that are there. And, um, and the the plot of the story is that they go, they create a mission there um, in the village, and, uh, but then through a treaty, the land gets handed over from the Spanish to the Portuguese, and the Portuguese want to come in and make slaves of the villagers. And so uh, the, the Jesuits are trying to save this village from the, from the slavers. There's a major character um, in this, who's named Rodrigo. And um, you'll recognize him. He's a young Robert De Niro. Um, but Rodrigo was a man of violence. He was a slaver. He was um, a, a man who, in a moment of wrath and anger, killed his brother over a woman. And because of his past, because of being a slaver, because of um, of killing his brother, he just really felt that he was unforgivable. He could not forgive himself. He um, didn't believe that God could forgive him. And so he took on a penance. And as a penance, what he did is he took a big um, net and filled it with the armor and weapons from his years of violence and from being a slaver and, and being a, um, a soldier. And tied it and dragged it everywhere he went um, until, until maybe somehow by a miracle he would carry this for his entire life or somehow felt like God could forgive him. So what you'll see is you'll see him dragging this. This is his penance. You'll also see the Jesuit priests get fed up with him. It's like, okay, enough is enough. They cut the rope. But Rodrigo doesn't believe that he's done with his penance, even when the priests believe. And then they uh, arrive at the village, and these are the villagers. He was a slaver. I mean, on sight, there was a real possibility that the villagers would kill him uh, because of his past. And so, um, so faith, that is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Rodrigo did not earn his forgiveness. But what you see at that moment is him recognizing it and accepting it. Um, feeling forgiven. Forgiving himself, being forgiven by the villagers, um, being forgiven by God. We all will never be free until we trust in the unbreakable and comprehensive and eternal love of God. And what you see is that, that moment when it, it, it sweeps him up. 
what God does is, is kind of scoops us up in our imperfection and in our failure and um, gives us a life that we cannot earn and that we cannot create. He becomes one with our lives, he joins us in that struggle. You know, God was with Rodrigo every moment in that struggle and responds um, in that he was not capable of responding to God's love. It was only when Christ worked in him that he was able to respond to God's love. So, for each of us, I'm not sure how much you can identify for you've walked maybe that journey with others. As, as a pastor and with, as a counselor, I've been with others. Um, I, it, I get choked up when I see that clip um, because I have a sense of experiencing that myself and um, being present when others experience it too. What is the weight that you carry around your neck? What is it that keeps you from, from being free? What concept that do you hold that um, it's just too much for God to forgive or um, you can't, you can't um, see beyond the limitations of this life and, and to be able to, to do that? Um, what, what's funny is I was thinking about this. I had silly things that kind of come up I mean, you know, just major failings. Um, when my first marriage fell apart, and my my father told me that I couldn't be a pastor anymore. And um, and I said, well, why not? Oh, is that possible? Um, the 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 time when my my father we painted the uh, the stoop of the house and then we went downstairs and we were doing another project downstairs and he needed a tool from outside and he tells me to go out and he said whatever you do don't step on the wet paint and I stepped on the wet paint and he said I'm worried about you boy he said you just will never be successful unless you get a grip of those things now I look back and realize that what I did was a perfect natural for a 13 year old with an attention span of a 13 year old it was almost like, as a 13-year-old, I was obligated to step on the step because Dad told me not to, you know, subconscious. Um, I, re I remember my mother, I had bought an engagement ring for a girl, woman, that my mother was thought unworthy. And so she said, I'll take care of that. And she hid the ring um, until she decided that it was okay for me to have the ring back. Um, she was right. <laughs> um, I got the ring back anyway, but if I had listened to her. Um, but all these opportunities and all these missed opportunities and, and all these failures and, um, and big things and little things are little things that can feel big. And, um, but until we really get how powerful and unbreakable and how eternal God's forgiveness and God's love is for us. Will we ever be free? You know, what's it like to live free? So what, what, what does it evoke in you as, you as you saw this clip, as you think of these things, as you, the, the intervention, the, the forgiveness of the villagers um, helped free, um, open up this possibility uh, for, God's, for God's love and freedom to come through. I had, a, um, I had a client one time who, who said that um, he told his children before the trial that if they testified against him in this divorce proceeding he was going through with their mother, that he would never speak to them again. And it had been 14 years since he had spoken to his two children. And I said, are they close? And he said, yeah, one lives about a mile away, and one lives about four miles away, basically in the same town. Hadn't spoken to them for 14 years. And in some ways, he said it with pride. You know, it's like, I promised that I would never speak to them again, and I, and I you know, kept that promise. Um, and yet, the pain in his eyes. 
that that was just barely acknowledged but was raw that that sitting with him I just wanted to weep for this family that was broken and wondering what it would take for him to um, he had been badly hurt in lots of different ways but he was also hurting the people that he potentially could love the most and what would it be like for um, for the children to forgive him, for him to forgive the children. I mean, what are the possibilities that are there? I mean, we all have skeletons in our closet or family members that refuse to speak to each other, and, and they'll go to their grave with pride that I'm, you know, I was able to keep this grudge. What kind of grudge do we have against God? You know, that God didn't give us the life that we thought we should have. Um didn't create for us the opportunities we should or uh, made life more difficult for us than we had. Um, Jesus never complained, even though he went to the cross. It was the nickel mines um, killing and um, the, the, the students that were um, killed and their school. Um, and it was part of the Plain community. It came out of, of Lancaster County and, um, and how... The, the response was um, one of forgiveness and freedom and redemption. Um, there's a, a wonderful book called La Chabon and how goodness happened there. And the story is that the, the, they were, there was a Lutheran church. I forget what the other church was. Um, but the two pastors and the congregations were worked together for uh, Hyde uh, Jewish families in their homes as they were passing over the mountains into Switzerland. So they were escaping the Nazis and going, and eventually the SS, the Nazis figured out what was happening and they came to arrest the two pastors. And the night that the soldiers and the SS officers came to arrest the pastors, they were just sitting down to dinner. And so um, Magna Trachma, the wife of the one pastor, invited the soldiers and the officers to sit down and have dinner with them before they took her husband off to camp. He said, how could you possibly do that? You know, if there's any definition that anybody has of enemies, how could you possibly do that? And her response was, they were there, and it was supper time. How could I not feed people? For her, it was just this, this beautiful simplicity and goodness in the face of this evil that exposed the evil, that exposed the, the, the burden. So prayerfully consider um, the burdens, the things that hold us back, and how lives are changed if we for ourselves and for others just, just grasp um, the possibilities and the freedom and the, that comes from the power of God's love for us and forgiveness. And it's not something that we can earn um, for ourselves or for others. It's only something that we can accept. It's only something that we can receive. This is a gift. It's a, there's got to be a catch. It's too good to be true. You know, I can't receive that gift. Well, that's why it comes from God and it ends in God too. Because God enables us to receive a gift that we know we're not worthy of, but God gives it to us anyway. And that's the nature of covenant. And that's the nature of God's love. So every time we try to prove ourselves, we try to fix things, we try to make things more perfect, every time we are burdened by anything in life, especially anything that holds us back from the freedom to live that God gives to us, that doesn't come from God. That's us getting in the way of this perfect freedom that God has offered to us. Um, sometimes you see it in extremely dramatic ways. We've had prayers. We've known people that are in recovery or, um, and, and been freed by something that was literally destroying their life moment by moment and day by day. Um, but all of us are carrying burdens of some kind um, that are not nearly as dramatic as that. And we 
And we don't know the stories. You know, that, that we look at people and we look at households and we look at families and everybody seems to be doing fine and everybody's doing well. And as Ephesians says, um, we were dead through the trespasses and sin, living in which you once lived, living the course of this world, that in the definition of this world, we can look at our lives and we can look at others and we could say everybody's doing fine, except they're dead except they're like Rodrigo, burdened and not free. They can go through all the motions. Um, and so there are times when we are, we are surprised. Um, you know, I had no idea that there was something wrong. How, why would this person kill themselves? Or this person died of an overdose? Who would have thought that they would, they would be a user? Um, you know, thing after thing, we keep it hidden. We're good at that. And yet all of us are struggling and broken in some way and have burdens that need to be released. So let's pray that, that God would lift us, um, release our burdens, um, and close in worship. Gracious and eternal God, for by grace you save us. A gift. Nothing that we can earn, nothing that we can do, nothing to prove, um, only to receive. So help us, Lord, to freely receive this gift that you have given to us and to understand the implications for us. Lord, we, sometimes we divide it up in our lives and say we, we see ourselves forgiven and free here, um, but we don't even make the connection that this burden that we carry over here is, is part of sin or part of uh, our brokenness, part of that burden that we carry, that you are willing to to free us, you ask us, you beg us, Lord, to come to the cross and lay the burden down. Um, so, Lord, we come today. Help us to come also later today when we need to again, and tomorrow, and the day after that, um, because of what you're able to make possible through Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. in here today. That's, that's a difficult topic. I think as we go out, I, I want to see us go out in joy. Uh, this, this last song is, is upbeat. I want to encourage you to put your hands together. Put down the things that are heavy in your life. Put your hands together. Rejoice in your heart. Amen. One, two, three, and four. your faithfulness great is your faithfulness you never change you never fail oh God true are your promises true are your promises you never change never fail, oh God. So we raise up our holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to God. Yeah, we raise up our holy your love and grace wide is your love and grace you never change you never fail oh God so we raise so we raise up our holy hands to praise the holy one who was and is and is
raise up a holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up a holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise. our hands to you because we know that you are the Holy One who lives in us. Help us to go out today to show others that you live deep within us, that you are a part of us. Help us to share what you've taught us with others. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we go out. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for worship. If you'd like to make a donation, just text the amount to 84321. The amount to 84321. And thank you for your gift.